Is our racing evolution underrated? Our racing evolution is a racing game from Namco released on the sixth generation game consoles in 2003. The game was developed as a spin-off to the Ridge Racer series, an evolution if you will. In fact, other than a smooth graphical design and some terrific electronic music, the game has almost nothing in common with its predecessors. Our racing evolution actually plays more like a simulation, includes licensed vehicles and a handful of real world tracks. Needless to say, the experiment never panned out for Namco, and our racing evolution never received a sequel. Critics, too, were not impressed with Namco's departure into simulation racing, and the game received mixed reviews upon release. Electronic Gaming Monthly gave the game a 5.7 out of 10, stating, The action on the track is mediocre, especially once you realize you'll have to wrestle with the touchy control on the same tracks in the same cars over and over. GameSpot delivered a 6.6 .6 out of 10, noting, It attempts to deliver deliver some simulation-style thrills, but the driving physics and options simply aren't up to snuff when compared to other, better games. Finally, Eurogamer scored the game even worse, giving the game a 5 out of 10, proclaiming, In other words, it's just like all those other racing games you read about but never buy, except in this case, it's a tacit reminder that Namco has slipped so far down the field that it's actually being lapped by games we bought almost 5 years ago. So is our racing evolution really this bad? Let's take a look. The heart of our racing evolution is the racing life mode. Here you follow the story of a young woman named Rena. The story opens with Rena driving an ambulance and a gentleman in a team racing suit telling her to step on it on the way to the hospital. Rena of course obliges, catching the eye of this mysterious man. He then hands her a business card and asks her to participate in a race. Before starting the race, I turned the braking assistance off because it's an incredibly lame feature, left the difficulty on normal, and left the traction control and anti-lock brakes on. Anyway, you are given a Pantera GTS and start a race at the Motegi Speedway. After winning the race, you win the car, and Rena's adventure into the world of racing begins. The rest of the 14 chapters all play out in a similar fashion. The story is conveyed by a tick at the bottom of the screen, as well as cutscenes between chapters. Generally speaking, at the start of a chapter, you get to select from a few vehicles, all in a similar class. Sometimes this will be a single race affair, and other times it will be a mini-series of sorts. Additionally, the game progresses nicely, giving you access to more powerful race classes as the story unfolds. It's a nice way to ease you into the action with slower cars, so you're better prepared for the game's more serious race cars. That's another thing to mention. Our racing evolution focuses on race cars rather than production vehicles. Still, there is a nice selection of cars from Honda, Acura, Lotus, Celine, Ford, GM, and Dodge, and even some rally cars from Subaru and Mitsubishi, and even an old Fiat, among many others. If you're looking for a Gran Turismo or Forza Motorsport lineup, you may find yourself disappointed, but I feel there was more than enough variety to keep me entertained. Speaking of variety, our racing evolution has Rena racing in a number of different events. While a majority of the game is road racing, there are a few different rally events and a drag event. The road racing is easily the game's strongest. The rally racing feels a bit underdeveloped. While the lack of grip felt natural, I found it difficult to get sideways and drift. The drag racing feels even more tacked on, and I think the developers knew this, giving you access to nitrous to assure victory. Still, the different chapters do an awesome job mixing things up, and you never really know what is going to happen next. After Stefan, the guy from the ambulance, recruits Rena, we learn he works for a corporate conglomerate named GVI, who owns many race teams. At one point, we actually have to race against the other teams in a private event. Rena has to use a souped-up Fiat to take on some GT cars. It's a charming little moment and really helps give our racing evolution some personality. In another scene, taking place in a steamy shower, Rena hints that she dislikes GVI's association with high-stakes gambling. A few races later, on the final lap of a race, we receive a team order over the radio that we are not to win the race. I can honestly say this is the first time I've experienced this in a racing game before, although I've seen these instances happening while watching Formula One. Anyway, another force pushing Rena to question GVI is a fellow female racer named Gina. Right off the bat, we learn Gina dislikes all of the money behind GVI and clearly wishes for a return to more pure old-school racing, where everything was about the team rather than money. 
This leads us to all the in-race chatter. First, Stefan will either offer praise, encouragement, or frustration during the race, but in addition to your crew chief, you'll also hear the other racers. The banter isn't too frequent to be annoying, but often enough to make it noticeable, and again is another charming feature of our racing evolution. The rivalry with Gina is somewhat sporadic and at times feels forced, but does what it needs to do, which is make Rena question what racing is all about and what is the right way or wrong way to do it. It isn't the deepest morality tale I've ever heard, but serves a purpose. The cutscenes, be it stills or animated, look nice, have a good sound design, and are voice acted well enough. Stefan is actually quite good, while Rena sounds a bit dry at times, but as this is a racing game, it doesn't really bother me. With all of that out of the way, let's get to the most important part of any racing game, the controls. As noted earlier, our racing evolution leans heavily on the simulation side of things. Being a fan of games like Forza Motorsport and even the old GTR sims on the PC, I have to say Namco did a really great job with the handling. For starters, you need to brake before the turn, rather than during the turn, or you'll find yourself in the grass. The game also rewards smooth trigger fingers, rewarding you for easing into the brakes and accelerator, rather than mashing the triggers. As you can tell from these tattletale bars at the bottom of the screen, I am a little rusty, but do appreciate how our racing evolution rewards skill and precision. Being a simulation, the game will also punish you for accelerating too quickly at the exit of a turn, and it can be very easy to lose control, even with the traction control turn turned on. The steering, too, is extremely precise and responsive. I actually wish the Xbox analog stick offered a bit more resistance or wish the game was programmed a bit differently to compensate for the analog stick, but it didn't take me long to get acclimated with the simulation-style physics at all. And this is what I enjoy about our racing evolution the most. The controls are just wonderful, and it's very easy to get into the zone, seamlessly moving from turn to turn, learning braking points, hitting apexes, and mastering corner exits to minimize wheel spin and maintain momentum. If you're expecting a friendly arcade style experience, you're not going to find it here. But if you enjoy a polished simulation affair, I think you'll find Our Racing Evolution more than delivers. In addition to a fleshed out story, Our Racing Evolution also introduces a pressure meter. Basically, if you stay on an opponent long enough, they'll start to feel the pressure and eventually crack. The pressure meter changes as well, and Gina, for example, will take a long time to crack. Of course, you might not need this at all, and exercise a pass at will. And of course, you could just nudge opponents off the track, if you so choose. Finally, let's talk about the courses. As hinted at earlier, there are some real-world circuits here, including Motegi, one of my personal favorites, Suzuka, Phillip Island, and the iconic Monaco. The game also presents Yokohama as a real street circuit, but I couldn't confirm this as real with any online source. After these are fictional tracks, including a pair of rally courses, a rally cross course, another road course, and lastly, the drag strip. While it may not represent the deepest selection of courses available, there is a nice balance, allowing you plenty of time to really learn the nuances of the courses, but not repetitive enough to make things stale. Rounding things out are some gorgeous graphics. First and foremost, the game hums along at a constant 60 frames per second without a single hiccup. This really helps enhance the sense of speed, and the constant frame rate also helps keep the immersion level high. The cars themselves also look excellent with high polygon models, realistic reflections, and high resolution textures. While not photorealistic by today's standards, they are still appealing in a 2003 sort of way. The tracks themselves follow suit. Trackside details like advertisements, fencing, grandstands, pits, berms, and the like all look excellent. Even the tarmac has just the right amount of gloss, helping it look realistic. About the only thing lacking is the grass, though this was more or less the norm for the time. Finally, there is the audio. One of the few things brought over from the Ridge Racer series was the music. And honestly, the techno, dance, and house blends really fit right at home in a sim. The high energy tracks do help give the racing a sense of excitement and urgency. There really isn't much else to say. Namco had some terrific composers, and this shines through perfectly in our racing evolution. The engine notes are also excellent, with each car having the appropriate high pitch whine or low growl, representing the different engines perfectly. So now we arrive at the spoiler section of today's program. As you make your way through the chapters, you, Stefan, and a mechanic start to toy around with the idea of creating an independent race team. GVI will allow everyone out of their contracts if they win a team race. 
Here, the final class of cars is unlocked. Le Mans prototype classics like the Audi R8 and the insanely awesome Bentley Speed 8. After 10 laps around Motegi, where the adventure began, you win, and a new independent team is formed. The new team struggles a bit, and Gina has regained her spot at the top, but Rena and Gina find a newfound respect for each other, and the game comes to a nice conclusion. Then the credits roll. After completing the racing life mode, representing about a third of the game, you'll have accumulated a ton of credits called RP. These can be used to buy new cars and even upgrade them. The rest of the game is made of the event challenge. These events cost RP to unlock, though you do win RP for clearing them. These events allow you to participate in races that didn't exist in the racing life mode, such as taking the beautiful Bentley Speed 8 on the fantastic Suzuka course. So that pretty much sums up our racing evolution, which of course brings us back to the question asked at the beginning, is our racing evolution underrated? Absolutely, without a doubt, yes. This has been one of the most refreshing racing games I've played in a really long time. I love how Namco took something as overwhelming and complex as a sim and went in a completely different direction. Rather than replicate something like Forza or Gran Turismo, they made an extremely palatable game. I love how our racing evolution presents itself as 14 chapters. Rather than overwhelming you with tracks and cars, things are presented in small bites letting you focus on the racing rather than buried in menus. If you want to tweak handling, our racing evolution allows it, but it's not required. I also appreciate the story. They seem to hint at the sometimes political world of professional racing, attempt to develop a rivalry, and try to talk about what racing is all about. For the most part, they miss the mark, and none of these concepts are fully realized. Still, the clips are short, and at least entertaining, and give the game a heart and soul. But even more impressive than the wonderful presentation are the controls. Our racing evolution is just a dream to play. It hits the perfect balance of precision and accessibility. You can bump into opponents and even scrape the wall without the game grinding to a halt. But most important of all, the game does a masterful job with steering, braking, and accelerating. Racing around the game's courses is rewarding, satisfying, and at times a breathtaking experience. And what more could you really ask for in a racing game?